how do you tell the entrepreneur dentist as they grow their practices from three to five to 10 to 15 to 20? Um, what do they need to be aware of? What can, cannot they forget as they build, let's say their empire? Um, and, and, and all of them are not, not just, a lot of people think that, oh, just because somebody wants to grow, that means they want to give a lower quality of service. It's not that. A lot of dental entrepreneurs I meet want to do a good They job. want to do a great job. Mm-hmm. They want to offer amazing dentistry. They mm-hmm. want to do it at a good cost. So what's the advice to these entrepreneur dentists who are smaller DSOs, who want to get larger, want to build a footprint, want to serve the entire community or the entire state? What's your advice to them what they should not forget and, and what they should always remember as if it was your first practice? What should they remember? Well, I think, first of all, um, that's a segment that's growing very rapidly as well, and that is somebody that has maybe two locations, and their goal is to have 10, and then their goal is to have 50. And the first thing that I think they need to do is create a solid foundation, because anything that's going to last, you never build a beautiful castle on a sandy foundation. So if they're flitting around and doing it uh at record speed without having the right prototype to build from. And all they need is one practice doing it well and right in order to duplicate and replicate and continue to grow. It's when they don't get the first one right. Right, but I think you also start dealing with problems of, you know, how do you hire the right staff when you get bigger, right? How do you keep on motivating them, training them? Because there's a lot of turnover that happens in these, uh, in these practices, in these practices mm-hmm. because the dentist entrepreneur has um, the mindset that I'm going to run this organization just like I ran one, one location. But now I have 10, mm-hmm. and I can't possibly be there at all 10 locations. Right. You have to so, hire good people to uh, manage it for you. You really can't be a hands-on entrepreneur. Uh, You have to hire people who have skills that, you know, most entrepreneurial people are extremely creative. Sure. And we are full of great ideas, but we must hire people who are, I I call myself the hot air balloon in my company. Mm. And that Lee Tarvin, who was my PA for 36 years, she was like the sandbag. She never said that won't work. She just said, let's sit down and talk about it. (laughs) Let's get the ducks in a row. And so she helped me get the pieces. I don't like the the organization and the and the actual I like the creative. And I think most of us that are entrepreneurs, we can come up with a million ideas, ideas, but we need to hire others to Implement. I think what Steve Jobs has said that the discipline and, and creativity are two sides of a coin. Yes. So if you're highly creative, then you have to make sure you surround yourself with, with disciplined those. people, <laughs> or the vice versa. <laughs> so building building the right team, uh, getting the right team together, and building the right first prototype, exactly. and then replicating that all across right. uh, is is the answer to that. And I think that the second thing is. When I went to work for my last doctor, who is the basis for my entire last 50 years in business, uh, 36 years in business, um, he sat down with his small staff and explained his philosophy. I want every single patient to believe they're the only one we're going to take care of. And he set the example. If he had not been, if he was a phony and didn't live what he said he wanted us to live, right. we couldn't have done it. Absolutely. And he would walk up front and hear me talking to a patient on the phone, and he'd say, you know, Miles, I just am so happy we have such a small office I can hear every word you say on the <laughs> phone. And it was a small office. And um, I said, well, you know, boss man, I've been in dentistry 14 years, and I've never had an environment like this where the boss is excited about dentistry. I mean... In order to grow, you have to have enthusiasm and excitement for what you do. Right. And he was very excited about his patients. He was very excited about dentistry. And he was very good to his team. And because he was so complimentary to us, we wanted to brag about him. That's the best marketing tool that a dentist or any business Absolutely. owner can have, treat, treat. is for people out there that work there happy. Happy Fantastic. people. Happy people makes happy, happy staff makes happy customers. That's right. You take care of your own people, things care, take care of themselves. And the dentist who is truly, truly 
uh, excited about dentistry and has a good mindset for ideal dentistry, okay. then the team adopts the doctor's mindset and the patients adopt what the team believe. That's so it comes down from the dentist from the top. to the team to the patients. You can never bypass the team being the conduit, right. kind of like the, um, the, the piece that's missing in a lot of practices. That, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Linda. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming over and having this discussion with me. Um, uh, you're welcome anytime. We're proud sponsors of Oral Cancer Cause, um, and we'll do whatever it takes this year to um, support the organization because it definitely deserves support. Um, and, 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 and I think the more people get involved uh, in, in, this, in this effort, I think we can make a bigger difference. Thank you so much. So thank you for coming. Um,